Gen 2 known as Sabayon or Sabayon. I'm not entirely sure how you say it. So if you want to let me know in the comments uh, if there is indeed an official way. So I'll just refer to it as Sabayon for all intensive purposes. Now I have looked at Sabayon 5 uh, before and you can have a look at those reviews here on the annotations. But today we are looking at Sabion 6. Now I have been trying to get around to this distribution for some time now. And, uh, and finally here we are and we're going to have a look at it. Now, uh, basically just to give you an idea of what, I, what system I'm running this on, uh, I am running it on a uh, pretty mid-range laptop from about two years ago. Uh, it just has an Intel Core 2 Duo, um, I think it's the T600 or... Uh, something like that, but that's not, it's not that important. But uh, more importantly, I've installed it on an external hard drive uh, using the BTRFS file system or ButterFS. Now, uh, performance-wise, that means that this thing is quite snappy, uh, especially when you're loading uh, applications. Loading lots of small files is, is noticeably quicker than, uh, than EXT4, uh, the previous standard. So even here, where usually it can sometimes take a while for these different wallpapers to appear, depending, of course, how fast your hard drive is, when you scroll down, they instantly, they almost instantly pop up and, uh, and it's quite uh, snappy. Even when you first boot the system and load something like system settings, it's there and you'd, you have hardly any waiting time. As far as boot speed is concerned, uh, it, wasn't that notice, it wasn't that noticeably quick. Uh, boot speed was a little bit sluggish, if I may say so, and it took about 15 to, between 15 and 20 seconds to log in with KDE. So that being said, those are the basic statistics out of the way and I know that some of you are bored already so let's talk about what Savion is and what makes it different. Savion is of course based on Gen 2. Now Gen 2 is quite an expandable base, it's very adaptable. At the same time it's one of those that is often thought of as a very hardcore Linux base. Definitely not something for the new user and Savion tries to bridge the gap really between the intermediate user who has used Linux for a while uh, and the and the expert users. Now I am not at all professing to be an expert user and I hardly consider myself an intermediate user. Having said that, I think Sabion does suit me quite nicely for the level of, uh, of, of knowledge that I'm at. Um, so having said that, uh, now Sabion 6.0 came out a few months ago and, uh, and it is based on with all the updates you are staying up to date with the latest uh, KDE software. Now, of course they do have many other distro, um, many other desktop environments available. They do have the, uh, they have GNOME and LXD, XFC and E17 but here you can see right out of the gate when you first download that ISO you are running KDE 4.6.4. With an update I'm, I'm assuming this will put you up to 4.6.5. I'm having some issues with updating, so I'm going to get back to that soon. Now, pre-installed applications, there are a lot of pre-installed applications. It is about a one point, I think it's about a 1.6 gig download, so it is quite a weighty distribution, but they do give you a great selection of software out of the box. It covers most of your needs. Uh, so right now, here we are just looking at system settings. Now, one thing I did notice that was a bit of a pain uh, as far as system settings was concerned is that in network connections, you don't have any options for the proxy, uh, for entering in proxy details. So that did bother me a bit, as I am behind a proxy server most of the time. And uh, so that was a bit of a bummer in my opinion, but there are ways and means around that. Uh, so just quickly, just flying through some applications here. They've got a lot of um, useful uh, web links here. Uh, a lot of about Gen2 and a lot about uh, and, and a lot about repos, and you can see here you can enable Git repos and uh, and the help forums and home pages, etc. Under development, we have the Qt uh, you, we have the Qt development kit here, which is quite handy, uh, especially considering this is a KD distribution. Now we get a, quite a few uh, little games here. As you can see, we're just scrolling through it really quickly. A lot of a lot of KDE games, a lot of KDE games actually. And also we have uh, Conquest, Killbots, K-Mines, k, -Mines, k Walk, and Color Lines, which are, they're all considered uh, strategy games, so that's all quite fun stuff indeed. Uh, I do recall in Sabion 5 and 5.5 they did have a World of Goo demo, but that seems to have been scrapped. So uh, that's no real biggie there. Uh, graphics, just standard KDE stuff, as well as LibreOffice Draw. Internet, we've got all the standard KDE stuff again. Well, not all, I would say some. We've got aggregated, we've got your instant messaging and your IRC client, and uh, you've also got Chromium as your default web browser, and Blue Double for your Bluetooth managing, which is different, of course, from the standard KDE. Uh, under music and video or multimedia, we have the Clementine Music Player, which seems to be more popular than the Amarok 
uh, music playing nowadays in KDE. We've got K3B, XBMC, sound mixer, VLC, and volume control for Pulse Audio. Now again, audio is something that I've had issues with Sabion in the past, but those issues seem to have gone now. Uh, I think it used to be an issue with between KDE and Pulse Audio. They never used to cooperate, but now they do seem to be cooperating, and it's uh, it's not a bad experience overall. Now, of course, under Office, we just have LibreOffice and Contact. Uh, and again, just to show you the application launch times, it really isn't that quick at all. These applications come up very snappily, and uh, and honestly, it's quite impressive. Even when you uh, launch applications for the first time, I have never used Clementine in my entire life, but it is already launched. Um, honestly, this uh, this distribution is very very snappy, especially when you use the BTRFS file system, which is uh, now the standard of uh, of Sabion. Which uh, honestly, I'm glad they've made the jump. I think. Um, it's been in development for some time now, but it's good to see that uh, the performance of this distribution is definitely up there when you use that BTRFS file system. As far as large file transfers, I'm not exactly sure it's faster than the standard EXT4, but definitely when launching applications, you will notice a marked difference between uh, BTRFS and the extension 4 file system. Now, as far as actual system management goes, you just get a, a lot of the basic KDE tools along with cups for your printing, uh, and then you get the package manager. Now, about the package manager, uh, gen uh, this is of course a Gentoo-based distribution, as I have mentioned, and it comes with the uh, comes with the Equo Equo package manager more or less on the back end. Uh, then on the front end, you have Sulfur, which is the actual uh, which is the actual the graphical utility that you use to manage it. Now this is where I, this is where I run into problems. Uh, I have configured this to use a uh, to use a proxy, but for some reason it is not able to contact the uh, the servers. Now I'm not exactly sure if that's a problem on my end or a problem on their end, but when I update the repositories, it doesn't seem to want to play ball, uh, which is a bit of a problem because uh, you can see here it can't validate them and please update your repositories in order to remove this message. The problem is I can't update them. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. I am able to ping the mirrors, but they are not uh, responding. So I'm not sure if that's a problem on my end or on their end. Either way, I can't really update the system, so it's not much use to me in the long run. Uh, however, had it worked, you would have your applications here, you would have your security patches here, and uh, and you have your repositories, file systems, etc. Sorry, system files, etc. Now, you can also configure this package manager to be more user-friendly, and uh, you can see I've ticked advanced mode, but then under normal, uh, under normal circumstances, it's just set up nicely along here. Very nice tabbed interface, and uh, even the progress bar is, although it is uh, sort of advanced, I think uh, it definitely makes a lot of sense. And that's where another area where Sabion really shines. They really make sure that their, uh, their error messages and their, uh, and their uh, and their bug reports really communicate in English what is going on. So it will come up and say, we've encountered an issue, but I am a little thing called a bug reporter and I'll help you get through this thing without doing something terrible to your system, etc., etc. You get the idea. So uh, under normal circumstances, you would have a update, uh, you would have an update manager which sits down in the bottom corner here. And, uh, and, this w and that would keep your system up to date on a regular basis and hence, uh, Gentoo, of course, being a rolling distribution, and uh, and Sabion, of course, benefiting from that. So overall system performance is uh, is pretty snappy indeed, as I have mentioned. Um, I haven't really found any serious setbacks with this distribution, apart from the package manager, which of course is a serious setback. So if the package manager had been uh, slightly more cooperable, uh, I may I may have considered keeping this distribution, but I'll check back on it in a few days. But as I said, I have installed this on an external hard drive, so it's not my everyday system. But it's just definitely one that I've wanted to play around with for some time, and I'm glad I finally get the chance to do it. Um, Entropy and the and the Equo backend of the uh, of the download manager for this package manager is uh, is quite usable. It's much like apt-get or yum uh, for the Fedora people, and honestly, I, I haven't really seen any major issues with it. Um, it uses similar syntax and uh, and similar command functions that you would see on most other modern package managers, so that's all well and good. Now they have of course moved over from Portage, which used to be their package manager, but now they are using Equo, and that's what they push and they recommend that on their websites. Um, that's really all I've got to say about Sabion. Uh, honestly, it, this isn't just a KDE distribution. They they support all of the other desktop environments out there, and they do a fantastic job of it at that. 
Um, and honestly, there's not really much that, that I can complain about at all. Uh, the, um, uh, it does come with the proprietary drivers for ATI and NVIDIA graphics cards out of the box, which is nice. And uh, also it does have some rather epic intro music, which if I can track down, I will put it at the beginning of the video because it is quite, uh, it is quite an epic way to start up your machine. It's uh, quite funny in that, in that, in that respect. Uh, they also bundle in some nice little wallpapers here as well. You've got the KDE wallpapers, but then you've got a few of their own, which are just uh, sort of abstract art photos, which are all well and good. Um, so, honestly, this is quite a solid distribution. Uh, not much has changed since Sabion 5. Of course, uh, up, more up-to-date up packages. And honestly, if you're already using Sabion 5 and keeping it up-to-date, up you're already up to Sabion 6 anyway. But for those who are, who are intermediate users that are looking to make a bit more of a jump to something more advanced, they want to learn more about Linux, they want to learn more about uh, the, uh, the intricacies of package management, they really want to get their hands dirty, then I do recommend Sabion as a nice bridging gap. You do have the adaptability and the reliability of Gentoo, but at the same time you do have it all nicely packaged and maintained, uh, which the Sabion guys do a great job of doing. So um, they do have a great website, and they've got a great Wikipedia page that you definitely should check out if you're considering Savion. But uh, otherwise, they, do, they really do a great job of keeping a homebred distribution usable and understandable for the everyday user. And I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing any, uh, any improvements or any enhancements that they can use with that BTRFS file system. Because honestly, uh, this is the first distribution I think that I have at least come across that uses uh, ButterFS as standard. And uh, honest, honestly, it's a very big performance boost, as I've, as I've mentioned quite a few times already. So honestly, if you're looking for something more intermediate, definitely go check Savvy on Linux out. Uh, it's quite an impressive distribution in its own right. It has some fantastic things going for it. As for me, it's a little disappointing I can't get the package management to work. But if any of you have any uh, expertise or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time, hopefully with another app review, and I will have another um, joint podcast coming out with Total OS today very soon. So thank you all, and we have reached... Uh, over 1,000 subscribers now, so that is a fantastic news for the channel. I greatly appreciate each and every one of your support, and I uh, would like to thank you for all the uh, for all the comments, constructive criticism, and uh, encouragement that you've left around my channel. It's uh, it's great to see that you guys are participating the way you are, and girls for those who are. So thanks again, and I will catch you next time. So sadly, so this is